This video features high-end, limited edition collectibles and is intended for adult collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Fang. So, remember that time we said we wouldn't be doing a haul or review of Integrity Toys' Seven Sins dolls? So we're not going to be doing a haul video this time. Uh, no. And like I said, I won nothing. So, no, we are not doing a haul. Yeah. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Somewhat unexpectedly, Sang and I did manage to secure a majority of the dolls exclusive to IT's Seven Sins online event, which took place late last year. We already discussed our thoughts on the event itself in a previous episode of our Collector's Corner podcast, which also included first impressions of everything released throughout the event. If you want the full rundown, make sure to check that one out. It'll be linked in the description below. In this video, however, we have several of the sinfully sought after dolls on hand and we'll be sharing in-depth reviews of the following five. Delightful Indulgence, Danya Zar, All For Me, Poppy Parker, Sweet Temptation, Tula Bell True, Tantrum, Aaron Salston, and Deepest Desire, Della Rue. We are still missing three dolls from the full collection, those being Turning Green, Poppy Parker, Glorious Vanity, Isabella Alves, and Leisure Lounge, Paolo Marino. It was not entirely for a lack of trying. Between Sang and myself, we entered and lost the lotteries for Poppy and Paolo. Once again, however, if you'd like to hear our thoughts on those dolls, check out the previous podcast. All right, as we prepare ourselves for Integrity Toys' first foray back into formal in-person conventions this year, let's take one more beguiling look back at the dolls of Seven Sins. Very excited to discuss these with you all. The Seven Sin dolls and accessories are housed in unique packaging for the event. The packaging is a rich wine red with snakes and tree branch imageries. The boxes continues IT's commitment to lightweight packaging made of thick cardstock paper. But with the Seven Sins packaging, there is embossing and glossy designs on them. All Seven Sins are inscribed inside the sleeve. The accessory compartment shares a similar design. The addition sizes vary by brand. The East 59th Della Rue is an addition size of $600 with a W Club pricing of $165. The Poppy Parker dolls were each a thousand count and also priced for the W Club at $165. New Face Aaron Salston is priced at $175 and was an addition size of $1,000. The Fashion Royalty dolls, including our Danya Zar, were $180 and a thousand count each. Tula Bell True was made to order and was priced $165. There's no way of finding how many of her were produced since her COA does not include a count. This goes to the same with all the event dolls as well. Each of these dolls come with a clear acrylic stand with a Seven Sins logo in metallic red and a stand pole. With all that taken care of, let's unbox these beauties and take a closer look. Let's start with our first sin. The original sin, if you will. Sweet Temptation, Tula Bell True. This Tula Bell was our first taste of the online event, and she was quite the stunner. She shares the same new screening as Big Love Tula Bell, who we also just recently reviewed. This Tula Bell has lilac eyeshadow on her eyelids, followed by a layer of smoky rose pink. You can make out a light pink layer that reaches her eyebrows. Her eyes are a lovely Aegean blue. She sports the Japan skin tone, and her lips are painted a bubblegum pink. Tula Bell's golden blonde hair is braided into a high ponytail. The thick braid reaches just past her rear. There are five butterfly pins you can stick into her braid. They're so cute. We've seen this sculpt many times before. There are two large ones and three smaller butterflies. She comes with gold-colored earrings with iridescent rhinestones. 
Tulabelle wears an enticing baby pink elaborate ensemble. Her coat has a reflective stripe print. There's a metallic gold pattern. The gold elastic strings around the waist are functional and tied into bows. There is a soft faux fur collar. The inside is lined in pink fabric. Removing the coat, she has on a matching bra top, mini skirt, and undergarments. She can wear a gold-colored metal collar. It attaches in the back with a chain. It's a little loose and it needs to be positioned correctly on her neck to look decent from most angles. There is an intricate gold embroidery throughout this ensemble with little faux pearls, holographic flowers, and clear bead detailing. It's so gorgeous and so elaborate up close. Her top has ribbon straps. It closes in the back with hooks and loops. Her skirt is high-waisted with a slit down the middle. There are functional pockets with oversized pouches. The undergarment is a separate piece, which makes it possible for you to display her without the skirt. The undergarment piece is just as elaborate as the rest of her ensemble. The gold embroidery here is a bit heart-shaped on both sides, which is really cute. She has on pink boots with light brown laces. These are made for the flat feet. It was a bit of an interesting choice to pair this look with flats rather than heels, but Sang and I have discussed that it reminds us a bit of twice performance looks. The more and more era specifically, and given multiple designs of Marks and Davids have referenced K-pop, you never know. <laughs> Tulabelle's accessories really scratch our itch for more luxe jewelry. In addition to her gold butterfly hairpins, she has a matching butterfly ring. We've seen this sculpt before on Metamorphosis Erin and English Rose Eugenia. Her gold chain bracelet is beyond stunning. There is a snake charm bedazzled with iridescent rhinestones and a golden apple charm. I am obsessed with her jewelry. These charms, of course, pay homage to the story of Adam and Eve. Seriously, this Tulabelle's accessories are next level. She has a gorgeous reflective gold faux snakeskin purse with a chain handle strap and buckle detailing. And yes, it does open up. You can swap between gold or pink nails using her alternate hands. She comes with a pair of tan sunglasses. The shades are tinted magenta pink. Next up is Deepest Desire, Della Rue. Della ditches her usual silver eyeshadow for a more muted, sultry brown eyeshadow. The upper eyelid is painted a metallic bronze. Her light brown eyes seem to glow against the smoky makeup. She has on cherry red lipstick. Della has raven black hair. There's a slight off-center part with a wavy curl. The ends of the hair is curled inward. She has on gorgeous silver earrings with light and awkward blue rhinestones. Della is dressed for an intimate evening or a night of seduction. She wears a flowing A-line lace peignoir. It is made up of a black fur pattern lace over a pale turquoise mesh. There are little black bow tie detailings at the sleeveless shoulders. Underneath, she has on a seductive matching lingerie set. There's a strapless bra top with a matching floral lace and bow tie detailing. The corselet is attached to garter belts. The panties are a separate individual piece. The garter belts are attached to black thigh-high leggings. She has on a large cuff bracelet adorned with light blue rhinestones and faux pearls. She wears black high heel slippers. There are black ribbon straps that are pretty snug to put on for us. Her feet doesn't want to stay in. There are little pom-poms on the straps. Finally, she comes with a cigarette holder that is bejeweled with blue rhinestones. She can hold onto this accessory a little bit easier with her alternate hands. Representing the sin of greed is all for me, Poppy Parker. Although the character of Poppy may seem too angelic for this theme, in the story, she's just playing a role for a thematic photo shoot. This release shares an eye screening with 2009's Summer Magic Poppy. We haven't seen this eye screening in quite a while. Our last Poppy with this screening was the redhead of the Looks Plenty gift set in 2019. Maybe the energy of Poppy's greed is seeping through her eyes as they're a unique shade of cloudy gray. She wears smoky pink to tan eyeshadow and a cute beauty mark dotted below her nose. She wears vivid magenta lipstick. Poppy's hair is light blonde and she has cropped bangs that are thickly gelled. An adorable sugar pink ribbon is fastened to her head and her hair is tied up into a high ponytail styled into wavy curls. Poppy's earrings are gorgeous pink gems with drop attachments, all bordered in silver. Of course, a greedy version of Poppy is draped in luxurious clothing. She wears a two-piece brocade skirt suit in whitish pink. 
It has a soft sugar pink faux fur collar, which is a covetous detail. The jacket and skirt both use the same brocade, with sparkly pink thread detailing. Poppy can wear a tiered silver chain necklace, which can be a challenge to put on. Underneath her two-piece, Poppy is wearing a baby pink bodysuit. It opens with hook closures in the back. Naturally, this possessive Poppy is also dripping with jewelry. She comes with a chunky pink gem ring and a lovely silver bangle bracelet decorated with pink rhinestones. She also has three slimmer bracelets, once again silver with pink gems. Poppy wears cute pink socks to pair with her strappy wedge sandals. They have ankle buckle details, and the cute crisscross at the back reminds me of ballet slippers. As you'd expect, this Poppy is not one to skimp on accessories. Her first paper shopping bag is a light pink, reading more and more in metallic lettering. Is this a twice reference, David Buttry? The handle straps are silver, and it comes with parchment paper inside. The second bag is a similar shade of pink with more metallic text, but instead reads never enough repeated throughout. Her third and final shopping bag is white and covered in sparkly silver dollar signs. Wonder how much she spent on this trip. Hopefully not more than we have on dolls. Her purse is adorable, with a recognizable stitch patterning and chain strap. It closely resembles handbags by Chanel, particularly the classic iteration. It opens up with a magnet closure. Poppy's hand swaps have magenta nails, just like the standards, but these ones are a bit longer. Lastly, she can top off her shopping outfit of the day with a pair of hot pink sunglasses dotted with rhinestones. As we recently mentioned in our True Collection review, these sculpts really need updating. They do not stay on the doll's faces. One might call it gluttony, but we'll call it indulgence. Here's delightful indulgence, Danya Zar. This version of Danya is in the Japan skin tone. Her eyeshadow consists of pale peach at the inner corners and light gray along the eyelid. Her eyes are a muted moss green, while her lips are painted in matte salmon pink. Her golden blonde hair is styled up into an elegant updo. There's a large curl swept to her right side. The back is twisted into an intricate bun. She wears large statement earrings with dark red rhinestones. She can wear a thick black velvet choker. It attaches with a hook and loop. It took a bit to get on due to the fact that it was so snug. Danya is wearing the most extravagant gown we have seen from FR in quite a while. The fabric is so luxe and delectable. It's a silky and sturdy black fabric with a beautiful floral brocade print. The gown is made up of three main layers. The outer piece is a voluminous chain that trails behind her. The inside is lined in the same brocade fabric. It is removable with hooks and loops attached to the dress. The second layer is a full, robust overskirt that is shaped like a tulip. This also attaches to the dress with hooks and loops. The inside is lined in black. The main course is, of course, the fitted dress underneath. There's a lace trim at the bodice, and the dress reaches just past her knees. She has on a black lace underskirt underneath her dress. This dress with the overskirt seems to pay homage to Balenciaga. She has on silver high heel pumps. They have black bow ties detailing. If you check out her insoles, you can see that it's metallic silver. Danya comes with an abundance of accessories. There is a flower brooch with a pin tip. You can poke it into her dress like we did. There's a coil bracelet adorned with pink and black rhinestones. There's a black spider ring with a large pink rhinestone center. We have seen this one before with the heirloom collection, Erin. Her long manicured hands are painted pink. She comes with pink opera length gloves, which consists of long fabric sleeves and painted glove hands. Finally, she has a small clutch purse. It opens with magnetics, but can't actually hold anything. Although there aren't many references to gluttony here, this clutch does remind us a bit of a croissant. We'll close out our Seven Sins review with Tantrum Aaron Salston, the doll representing wrath, which was certainly what I felt when I lost her lottery. It seemed like many other collectors experienced something similar, given her edition size was not nearly large enough to meet demand. Luckily, Sang did win her very competitive lottery, and he was kind enough to let me take this one. Something wicked this way comes with Erin's sharply arched eyebrows. She wears smoky tan eyeshadow around her brown eyes, and her lips are painted blood red. Erin's hair continues to bring the drama in the appropriately titled Manic Pink Color. This one here has perfectly cropped bangs, thankfully, and there's a bit of product down the back keeping it from being completely straight. It's extremely long going past her knees. 
This hairstyle includes one more killer detail. Erin is sporting an undercut with a light pink paint all along the back and sides of her head where the rooting stops about halfway down. I think adding some flocking here would have been a really nice additional touch, but it is just paint. As shown in the promos, it can be a bit tough to see unless you lift up her hair. In true punk fashion, Erin wears unique earrings on each ear. One is a silver safety pin and the other is a flame. The two upper ear cartilage piercings are sculpted onto the doll and cannot be removed. In the Seven Sins event, Jesse Ayala mentioned this Aaron being loosely inspired by the concept of constraining wrath, particularly that of a child, so it's fitting she sports a playful plaid dress draped in chains. She wears a simple red turtleneck underneath the dress. The micro chains are an awesome accessory, draping down both sides of her in tears. One pair can act as shoulder straps for the dress. If you inspect them closely, you'll see tiny cross and padlock charms attached. It's really awesome. Although you can reposition some of the chains because they're so long, they are sewn onto the dress and cannot be removed. This red plaid mini dress is strapless, and it has a gorgeous reddish maroon lining inside the skirt section. Erin's red-tipped nails look like they've been dipped in blood, which you could say might have happened during an angry outburst. She has a silver ring that reminds me a bit of a razor blade from afar, and she comes with a pair of spiky cuff bracelets. Her other ring coils around her finger like a snake. Erin wears a pair of nude-toned sheer tights under her dress. Her shoes are buckled platform heels in cherry red. They zip up in the back and the soles are black. To top off her biker punk look, Erin can wear a black short-sleeved swing jacket. You can simply position her arms right through those large open sleeves. You can accessorize it with tiny magnetic circle button pins in red, purple, and yellow. These are a very cute detail, but they're extremely easy to knock off and lose, so be very careful with them. The jacket is super detailed, with a large functional zipper down the center and faux zipper and button details along the billowy sleeves. There are also functional pockets at each side and a fully functional belt and belt loops, complete with buckle detailing. There are more faux zipper and button details along the back. If you'd like, you can swap Erin's nude tights for an alternate cherry red pair. She has an alternate pair of hands in a clasping pose. Her bag is really adorable and a great final touch to her pissed off punk theme. It's shaped like a school lunch bag decorated with graffiti stylized artwork, including a skull, screaming mouth, knife, and safety pin. There's more artwork of a demon face and flames on the other side. You can roll it up and down just like a real lunch bag and it has a magnetic closure at the tip. Unrolling it reveals even more stylized artwork like an almost completed game of tic-tac-toe. All right, here are our final thoughts on Integrity Toys' Seven Sins dolls. Tula Bell was our introduction to the Seventh Sins theme and she excels in that. A little too much, in fact. This Tula Bell might be my favorite doll of the year. Stunning in every way, what a gorgeous doll. She comes with so much for her price. This makes me miss Mark even more so. This is the level of design and care I expect from IT. Della Rue embodies the less sin very well. While I think a lingerie doll is a little too predictable for the sin, Della is a very pretty doll that I'm glad to own. And thank you, Chris, for hearing collectors critique that all the past Dellas have a very similar silver eyeshadow and changing up for this doll. She doesn't come with much and I expect more value when it comes to Chris's designs. I wish we have gotten a few more fashion pieces or accessory for this price point. All For Me Poppy is such a cute doll. I appreciate the return of this screening and I hope to see more fan favorite screenings make a comeback. This Poppy in particular is my least favorite of the core seven Sin dolls. I think if you remove the bags, it's hard to figure out which Sin she is supposed to be. I think she could have used more accessories to sell the greed theme more. I love Danya right from the promos and I knew I had to have her. She's so luxe and even more stunning in person. While I did feel like she did fit the gluttony theme, she could also fit the greed sin as well. She could have used more literal gluttony design elements, which wouldn't require the designer to explain the theme to collectors. I think she's a gorgeous standalone doll, despite arguably being the weakest on-theme doll of the collection. Erin is by far the most popular doll of the event. The lack of new face dolls throughout the year, plus how edgy she is, 
really raised her secondary price. She's the most Jessie doll I have ever seen. It's the type of doll collectors have been craving from Jessie, and to me, this Erin harkens back to Jessie's ultra successful Reckless collection. Congratulations to collectors who won her, and I hope Jessie makes more dolls like her. Overall, I thought the theme and execution was pretty good for this event. The theme was concise, but broad enough that the designers could flex their creative prowess by keeping it within the theme. Some executions were better than others, but I think there's a little bit for everyone to enjoy. The event ended up with a lot of products. Beyond the dolls, there were fashion and accessory packs. If you end up winning them all, it ended up being a hefty sum of money. But since there were so many products and everything was lottery, I hope everyone won at least something that they wanted. As we discussed in our podcast, I was initially really excited for this event's theme. I think it could have made for an amazing in-person convention, but the doll collection itself had a few highs and lows. I think now having most of them in our hands, however, it turned out to be a very fun and vibrant collection overall, even if some designs gel with the theme much better than others. We'll start with the top two contenders from my personal favorite, Tulabelle and Erin. I think Tulabelle was a great introduction to this theme, although I have to say she ended up being pretty different from the rest of the collection. I was expecting more elegant Victorian Rococo inspired looks from this theme and Tulabelle delivered that in the best regard. I knew I'd love her soft pastel color story from the start, but she is genuinely breathtaking in person. Her layered fashions are so detailed with all the beading and embroidery, and she has some of the most strikingly beautiful jewelry I think I've maybe ever seen on a doll. <laughs> Once again, you will be sorely missed, Mark. <laughs> but this and True were a hell of a send-off. When Jesse takes design risks that pay off, it often results in the most coveted doll of any given collection, so this Aaron's massive popularity comes to no surprise. Hearing about his inspiration drew me into the design even more. I think she's such a fun combination of playful whimsy and aggressive edge. Punk and goth millennial collectors, I think, will be especially drawn to her. And I mean, how can I not love a pink haired Erin? <laughs> this definitely needed to happen. Her loud palette might not be for all collectors, but the people who will love her will really love her. Now, all for me is a Barbie poppy if I've ever seen one. <laughs> and there are poppy collectors who love that, especially after the discontinuation of fashion model silk stones. It could be argued this was a bit of a safe approach to the greed motif, but if you're a fan of blonde and pink poppies, you'll likely eat this one right up. She's gorgeous, and I do appreciate the light touches of Chanel inspo. It definitely helps her feel rich. A notable highlight is her super adorable and in some cases versatile accessories. Della is always beautiful, but as I've mentioned before, I'd love to see her look, particularly her hairstyle, changed up a bit more. This one is also a little sparse for the price. I wish she came with more. I think overall, I'm not totally seeing the lust theme with her. There's a part of me that feels like the outfit could have been even more risque or daring, but maybe that's too far outside the realm of East 59th. <laughs> Danya is a lot lovelier in person compared to promos. Her dress is stunning up close. That fabric quality and texture is really nice. But honestly, I'm not sure I think she fits the Seven Sins theme, like, at all. <laughs> this feels like more of a holiday look to me. I think at least incorporating something more food or wine related into her dress pattern or giving her more thematic accessories would have gone a long way here. All in all, I think this was a very solid collection with a few potential major grails, a little something to please everyone, and I'm very grateful to have secured the ones I wanted most, which was in part an ordeal. <laughs> Hopefully IT ups addition sizes, so that isn't as much of a concern moving forward. So what are your thoughts on the Integrity Toys 7 Sins dolls? Definitely let us know in the comments below. Our full Integrity Toys playlist will be linked on screen here. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, let us know what you want to see reviewed next, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.